As dedicated South Park fans, we know how ridiculous this show can get. I mean, there's a seemingly endless number of hilariously bizarre characters on this show, each of whom brilliantly satirizes some part of our culture. Are you purposefully trying to use words that assert your male privilege? The show's creators, Matt and Trey, never fall short on creating iconic, unique, and hilariously offensive characters that both humor and shock us. I am Lord, yeah, 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 Lord, Lord. Poking fun at celebrities, influential figures, and everything that's going on in the world. Mr. Cruz, come out of the closet. No! But some of these characters come from completely different worlds, many outside of our galaxy. But then what exactly is your superpower? There's actually a surprising number of alien characters who have made a pit stop in South Park, Colorado, and we thought it would be appropriate to give our extraterrestrial friends the good to evil treatment. Which aliens are good? Which ones are evil? And exactly how many aliens are there in South Park? I'm Brad with Wicked Binge. Grab your cheesy poofs, because this is South Park Aliens, good to evil. All right, you guys, we gotta get rid of Finland. Starting out with the most good, as usual, unsurprisingly, this goes to none other than Bradley Biggle, also known as Gogzara, who first appeared in the episode titled Rainforest Schmainforest in Season 3. At first glance, Bradley seems to be a normal kid, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, uh, Midbury Crunch, why don't you stay here and mind the base, okay? Kim. He's actually a being from a faraway planet, sent to Earth after his parents go missing. In short, he's actually Gokzara and inhibits powers too big to measure. Now, considering how cruel and power-hungry most South Park characters are, one would think that Bradley would use these powers to wreak havoc, which is definitely something Cartman would do if given such opportunity. But he does no such thing. Save Earth. Shablagu. Instead, he uses his newfound powers to defeat Cthulhu, close the rift between Art and Reline, and incinerate Cartman, thus saving the world from certain destruction. There's a big bucket with butter's poop in here, and there's nothing to eat! You got poop, don't you? On top of being so selfless and brave, Bradley also seems to be a good friend. That side of him was shown in episodes Coon 2, Hindsight, and Coon vs. Coon and Friends, where he actually tries to end feuds between his friends and even tries to stop Mysterion, aka Kenny, from provoking sacrificing himself in exchange for their friends. What? But he'll kill you! Maybe. Even though that greatly endangered his own life. On top of all of this, Bradley seems to be quite an innocent and kind kid, having fallen for Cartman's manipulations and schemes multiple times, such as the time he helped Cartman capture Kyle in the episode It's a Jersey Thing. Your tactics don't work on me. Snarky. Despite truly trying to help Cartman, Bradley often fails in finishing Cartman's task, which results in Cartman bullying him. The harassment was so bad at one point that Bradley developed a fear of Cartman, which was evident in the episode Coon 2 Hindsight, where he was beaten up by Cartman when they were going to the grocery store. Shut up, Midbay Crunch! You aren't even anything! Luckily, Bradley is the kind of kid that doesn't let fear control his life. Thus, he puts Cartman in his place in episode Coon vs. Coon and Friends, where he put Cartman in prison after defeating Cthulhu. Next, we have the Marklars. Marklar, this is Marklar. Approaching Marklar. Perhaps one of the most peaceful species in South Park's unnecessarily cruel universe. The Marklars are depicted as an intelligent species of identical aliens who refer to all people, places, and things as Marklar. Here on Marklar, we refer to all people, places, and things as Marklar. They first made their appearance in the episode Starvin Marvin in Space, in which a single Marklar visited Earth specifically Ethiopia. Having been ignorant of Earth's harsh customs, he was brutally killed by a lion, or as his people would say, he was killed by a Marklar. His spaceship was later found by Starvin Marvin, who used it to bring his people to their new home, the Marklar's planet, in order to escape from Christian missionaries who are set on converting the Ethiopians to their faith. Reading Bible plus accepting Jesus equals food. With the help of the boys, specifically Kyle, who explained the situation to the Marklar's in their language, Marklar's allow the Ethiopians to live on their planets, having been touched by Kyle's words. These Marklar's want to change your Marklar. They don't want this Marklar or any of his Marklar's. The act of letting a foreign species inhibit their home was very nice. The Marklar's showed great generosity and kindness, which is unusually rare in the ruthless world that is South Park. Young Marklar, your Marklar's are wise and true. You know, I was kind of half expecting Cartman to blow their planet up at some point. What, we're not gonna come visit him? I know, but you don't tell him that. Twitter. Miles
Charles Standish takes third place on our list. He's depicted as an alien from the planet Plymouth, who was sent to Earth against his will by the Indians, another alien race, in the episode A History Channel Thanksgiving. I need your wisdom to get back to my planet! Throughout the episode, we couldn't help but notice how respectable Miles is. He was frequently shown thanking others for their help, as well as coming to their aid when in a harmful situation. Nevertheless, in contrast to being so altruistic, Miles was also shown to be overly suspicious of others, even getting ready to kill the History Channel representatives before they had a chance to explain who they were. We're the History Channel. We care as much about the truth as you do. The Intergalactic Police takes fourth place on our list, and for a valid reason. Although they are the said protectors and the literal law enforcement of the universe, their methods of catching criminals are questionable, to say the least. We're the first aliens you've ever seen. That's right, yep, you're the first ones. But then again, they're just doing their jobs. And in their defense, they did offer the world leaders and Randy Marsh numerous opportunities to own up to hoarding the space cash. Did you find the missing space cash? No. I mean, they even nuked Finland to keep things under wraps. They have their methods to determine which species are worthy of joining the others. And humanity failed. And we have nobody to blame for that but ourselves. We do the space cash test to see if that species is worthy of joining. Now we have Cavern Zexor. The notorious gangster was under pursuit by the Intergalactic Police for stealing space cash in the episode Pinewood Derby. I can kill any mug on this two-bit planet I want. When the audience is first introduced to his character, he initially appears as nothing more than a stereotypical criminal. <laughs> Who wants it next, huh? But as the plot of the episode progresses, it's revealed that he's actually the ambassador to New Planet Testing, responsible for the task of testing if Earth is worthy of joining the intergalactic community. I am the ambassador to New Planet Testing. As he executes his plans, we see he's not very fond of humans in any shape or form, even ridiculing them for their low intelligence several times. I mean, how stupid is your species? Space jail? Now we have the visitors, the stereotypical looking aliens that made their first appearance in the pilot episode. Carmen gets an anal probe, in which they gave Eric Cartman a, well, y y I don't have to explain it. They also kidnapped Ike Bruslovsky in the same episode, without much contemplating. Visitors! Having shown no care for what they've done, we can conclude that they don't particularly come in peace, or just oblivious of the things they're doing, deeming them necessary for research of the human race, and not harmful to Earth's residents. I mean, if they view humans as animals, they're guilty of essentially animal cruelty and experimentation. Moo moo moo. Which isn't good. Up next, we have Wizard Alien, who was first introduced in the season 14 episode, Sexual Healing. In trying to find the reason for various rich famous celebrities cheating on their wives, the government finds that the virus for sexual addiction comes from an alien wizard who's hiding in Independence Hall. One originating from Independence Hall causing rich successful men to have sex with lots of women? The wizard alien is that very alien, and surprisingly, he's very intelligent. Unfortunately, it's his intelligence that got him killed in the end. My god, they've done it! Coming up next is Tiny Alien, whose real name is unknown, and who came to Earth in a tiny spaceship during the beginning of the episode Spooky Fish. Although his motives and intentions remain unknown because he didn't get more screen time, his looks alone prove he's not on Earth to make friends. Up next we have Nagix, the shape-shifting alien first seen in the episode titled Cancelled in Season 7. Alright Earthlings, what form do you want me to take? Revealed to be a television producer of the hit international reality TV show Earth which, as the name suggest it, centers around planet Earth and its inhabitants. We're a production company. We make intergalactic television programs. At first glance, Nagic seems like a kind and helpful individual, having done everything in his power to make the boy's situation not so grim, but his true nature is revealed as the episode progresses. Well, you kids can go back to Earth if you want, but I'm afraid it won't be there for long. Despite his friendly nature, he actually does not care about Earth and its fate, since he sees humans as beneath them, a race whose problems he uses as content for his reality show. What a jerk. Let's call in the demolition crew to strike the Earth for resources. Next on our list is the Predator, also sometimes known as a Yaucha, who first appeared in the Season 5 episode, Butter's very own episode, and later reappeared in the Season 11 episode, Imagination Land, Episode 3. The Predator is obviously based on the central character of the Predator franchise, and South Park's depiction of the character corresponds to the original. He's an incredibly skilled fighter with the ability to stalk and kill any enemy with ease. Ironically, 
The South Park's Predator chooses to use his power on children, like in episode Imagination Land Episode 2, in which he's seen attacking Butter several times, almost killing him. On that note, let's throw in the Xenomorph, the horrifying beast which wreaked havoc in the episode Imagination Land Episode 2. The alien is one of many characters and creatures from pop culture that is represented in the Imagination Land series of episodes. As the main antagonist of the Alien film franchise, the alien in Imagination Land is also antagonistic. His only drive is to kill anything in his path, and would have likely succeeded if it wasn't shot by Jesus himself. Christ. Now we have the Jusians, an alien species of TV executives that control all media in the universe, who first appeared as antagonist in the season 7 episode Cancelled. Oh my god, will you look at the heck was on that Jusimac? Just as suspected, the Jusians are entirely corrupted by wealth and fame, and are money-driven and business-oriented. The subtext isn't exactly subtle. When the boys plead to save Earth from being destroyed, the Jusians couldn't care less, stating that since the hit reality TV show Earth hit 100 episodes, it's significantly reduced in quality. Thus, both the show and the entire planet Earth are being cut. You made it to 100 episodes, you should be proud! Their act of ignorance and greed is basically unmeasurable. Who in their right mind would discard an entire planet over a TV show? Well, these guys right here, how cruel. Oh man, I can't believe I sucked your jag on. Now we have perhaps the most controversial species of aliens on this list, the Galgamex. The Galgamex vagina is three feet wide and filled with razor sharp teeth. Who represent the Roman Catholic Church on their planet. In the episode Red Hot Catholic Love, they are seen protesting Priest Maxi's request to change the holy law to stop preying on little boys. No sex with boys. <laughs> talk about evil and twisted. Maybe if that problem is going to be solved, we just need to forget about the Galgamax. Forget about the Galgamax! <laughs> and the most evil character goes to none other than Xenu, an evil alien dictator of the Galactic Confederacy. He's evil, he's ruthless, he's cruel, he's everything a dictator stands for. And interesting fact, he's actually an alien character from Scientology. According to the sources about Scientology written by science fiction author L. Ron Hubbard, Xenu brought the people to Earth and set them all up in volcanoes, and then killed them with some nuclear hydrogen bombs. What a fun guy. So what do you think? Which alien character in South Park is the most evil? Which one is your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below, and make sure to binge watch our full good to evil playlist. Should we cover South Park celebrity characters next? Monsters? Let us know. But most importantly, stay wicked.